Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. Thank you for clicking on the video. And this is Mario here, and I will be reviewing Friday the 13th, the video game. Yes, the big horror, the big boogeyman himself, Jason Voorhees, will be hunting me down, and I will be hunting down other people for shits and giggles. So, listen and watch as I try to kill a lot of people, and, well, I try and avoid getting killed. So... Let's just jump right into it and review this game. So, the game gives you the option of being a counsellor or Jason. I'll cover the counsellor first. And basically, it's not all downhill being a counsellor. You do get some good options. There's many options to survive the night or fend off Jason. Giving you lots of perks different abilities, being able to get the police there quicker, being able to swim silently, repair the car easier, uh, stronger melee damage, but also there are some negatives to it. Uh, minus speed decreasing for car if you choose to have better boat stats. So not only that, the game has given us multiple costumes uh, from being able to change the colour of the regular outfits to swimwear for Every counsellor, because why not? And then, also a Halloween one, which is on the content roadmap, which uh, the developers are actually really sticking to and bringing new content out for everyone to embrace. So, we've got Vanessa in a kind of Wonder Woman-style Justice League-themed apparel, which is, you know, quite appropriate at the time. Uh, the DVDs out, Justice League. So, our main costume, you unlock extra colours and patterns as you go on. So, your main aim of the game here is to repair. Uh, main aim of the game here is to repair any broken generators, uh, the telephone line, so that you can call the police, or Radio Tommy Jarvis, repair vehicles to escape, or just set up traps and survive the night. But in doing so, you might come against your own traps, which are very well placed by Jason with this telephone box. And yes, they are actually quite deadly if you don't take care of yourself, as is pretty visible right there. That's... It's my own stupid fault for trying to trying to be a good team player. So for the car, there's multiple parts. You've got car keys, you've got gas, and you've got a car battery placed all throughout the map. For the boat, you've got gas and uh, and rotary blades, which usually one of these two or three items are usually in cabins or areas next to one of the vehicles. So it, the game does give you a little bit of a fighting chance by finding these nearby. And all you've got to do is just repair <laughs> and not get killed in the process. Because I have lost track of how many times I've been mid-repairing a vehicle or a generator or anything and dying miserably. With each different counsellor, yes, there are different stats. Some... Vanessa here is actually good at running. As you can see, the number of times that you have to do a QTE for repairing something, well, let's just say she should have stuck in its shop. And if you think that's your only option to fend off against Jason, you are wrong. You have many weapons uh, at your disposal. And there goes my head for good measure. So, bringing on weapons, we'll bring on, <laughs> we'll bring in Tommy Jarvis. That was, uh, that was well-timed. So, with Tommy Jarvis, you, whatever character escapes or dies, 
And if your teammates have already contacted Tommy Jarvis, then you can actually spawn again with a shotgun, a pocket knife, a map, a radio, and I believe a first aid kit. Stats are pretty well good, but uh, yeah, like everyone else, you really don't want to get caught in a fist fight with Jason because uh, yeah, he's he's going to mess you up real good. Doesn't matter who you are, and Jason finally got Tommy. What can I say? So that's pretty much everything covered for the counselors. Let's dive into Jason and. Every mode as Jason starts out with some guy in black just getting murdered. It's it's quite a shame. So as I said, with the counselors having to repair, Jason, you have to go around destroying the generators, making sure that the phone lines don't get repaired, making sure that uh, certain vehicles in the map do not get repaired. And that comes down to different Jasons having different quantities of traps. Traps are, uh, <laughs> are Jason's best friend, to be honest, because he's on his own here. So repairing the phone lines is one of the easiest ways to get off the map. You call the police and you have to wait out five minutes. But even with the capacitor put back in and they're repaired, Jason can destroy them, which makes it a little bit more fun and stressful when it really, really comes down to it. And, well, it's an easy target for counsellors. As you can see here, Jason just, oh, there's something that you don't see every day. Jason getting stabbed in the neck with a pocket knife. But this is the thing, there's, it's not just all one-sided with Jason. Yes, you do get four special abilities that uh, gradually appear over time. But you also get a rage mode. As you see in the top left hand corner, gradually over time, uh, this bar fills and it means that you can bust down doors without even having to do anything, just actually kick them down, making it a lot easier because I do find that playing as Jason sometimes is a little bit underpowered against some counsellors, especially if they swarm around you. So it's good to see that you actually get a good bit of assistance because basically you're on your own against all these counsellors, all these people or bots, and it can be pretty, pretty taxing on you. So one of the abilities is to basically see where the counsellors are. If they're in a house, a cabin, it glows red. You can see them if they're running about, which kind of makes it a little bit harder if they're running about because the areas of the map. But as a counsellor, you can hide in the cabins. Just don't give yourself away, let's be honest. One system that I do love and I had to cut uh, into playing as a counsellor is the fear system. The fear system basically is the longer that you spend outside, the more dead bodies you see. The longer that you're in cabins with lights out, uh, the more you see Jason. The edges of the screen darken. And as you can see here, you can barely see anything. And it really, really brings home the point of this is a team game. You really need to work as a team from start to finish. And if you don't, and you're getting picked off one by one, this is what happens. Like your mini map actually goes away after a certain point because you're that scared. Look at, like, at least 50% of the screen here is darkened. And yep, just have to, sometimes you just have to succumb to, yep, I'm done. And there's nothing else you can do. You can try and survive. All you want, it's just going to be more difficult as it goes on. Now, let's get on to some fun parts, which, as you know, you're playing a Friday 13th game. What would a Friday 13th game entail? Lots and lots of gruesome endings for characters. 
like, say someone's trying to swim away from you, Jason can move like a shark in water, and it is terrifying the speed it goes to. You can also shift around the map, which he's doing right now. It gives you a short kind of distance, and you can zoom quickly to people, or an objective, say, in front of a car to break it, or to a phone line. It can also morph around the map, and it's... So each Jason comes with his special own kills. That's through different weapons. They also have special kills per different Jason, which are unlockable, like character perks. So it makes every game a little bit more fun. Uh, if you want to go after someone by breaking them apart, or throwing an axe to their face, or crushing their skull, or breaking their chest, or giving the old Bane Batman breaker, you know, or just a simple crush your head in a door, it's all there, classic, some classic kills, thrown out through a window as well, so oh, there's, uh, here's what I don't like about this game, which it will be getting fixed in a patch update, but it is going to be, I believe it's going to be a while before it's fixed, and it's uh, on single player, uh, on offline bots. Basically, the bots' AIs are sometimes downright terrible. Like here, one of the counsellors ran underneath the bed, and then another was just hovering about, waiting to get murdered. Cool. I'm down with that. I'll just, oh wait there, I'll just crush your head as well. It's, it's, if you want, I find that playing on offline bots is probably the easiest way to level up and unlock new Jasons, new costumes for counsellors and the like. But the AI does need a good fixing, but it's not all bad. I'll show some good instances of it. But right now, a counsellor escaped, ran through the window, and, okay, let's go outside and get her. Oh, no, wait there, she's come back in. And this is where the counsellor dies. It's, 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 it's not all bad, but it's not all good. It's maybe the only bad thing about it. as Jason as well, you can see around the map little points, little sound bubbles, and this is where counsellors' stealth and stats and perks come involved. If you can keep a quieter radius on yourself, you can sneak around the map and avoid Jason the whole time. But if, if you go someone for brute strength or speed, they're going to give yourself. They're going to give yourself away pretty quickly against Jason. This is a couple of good instances of the AI actually putting up a decent fight, uh, using weapons appropriately and with pretty good accuracy. I'll give them that better than I ever do. Uh, using a flare gun against you, you know it's. But then, oh, hold on. Just standing outside the door waiting to be murdered. It's, uh, you, you, you take the good with the bad. And I do hope that the developers do actually get around to fixing AI so that it's, 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 it puts up more of a fight. You know, it's it, it does have its good moments, but it also has its bad moments. Uh, this is another great example of the AI putting up a massive fight here. So, found a counsellor, what are they going to do? They've found me, they run another way, right enough. Not before, bouncing a flare off my face. Pretty much what anyone would do, though, the counsellor that they've went has actually poor physical stats, so it's quite a shame because he's going to die, eventually. But then again, there he goes, finds a weapon, and uses it, and then goes to run away. Goes to run away. Remember that. 
instead of escaping out a window in there, it comes right up and back in, which uh, is going to lead to his demise for not being that great. Oh, another one bites the dust. Sorry. Oh, no, he fought against me. One of the things that I love, those pocket knives are an absolute pain. Uh, they are good. They actually, uh, one thing that I do love about them is not only are they good at stopping Jason and giving yourself a chance to run away, you can actually use them on Jason's trap. So if he's planted traps near a car, a point of interest that you need to get in, then by all means, batter in and destroy it. One of the best ways to play this game is on the offensive as a counsellor. And if you find Jason's cabin, wherever it is on each map, they're all in different locations in each map. So it's it, sometimes it's pretty obvious because there's like a huge d void of anything nearby there. If you pick up Pamela Voorhees' uh, uh, jumper, put it on, you can actually try and lull Jason into almost being like stunned, and it gives you a small chance to actually kill him, which there's, there's only really four ways to escape, uh, to survive. You either survive the 20 minute round, you escape via the police, you escape via a car or boat, or you kill him. It's, it's a nice way to play it. It's, it gives you more options than other games, such as Dead by Daylight, where you only really have one option. You can't kill the monster so this adds a little bit more replay value with the different options and being able to survive unfortunately we're in a vest it's not always a good thing and can lead to horrible horrible mistakes like this hi oh, oh well i'm like getting choked trying to save everyone thank you jason your work. One of the most nostalgic things in this game is the inclusion of a change of skin for Jason 4, Jason Part 4, which is the Nez Jason. And as you see, he's in the same colours as the last Friday 13th game. That's actually terrifying that the last Friday 13th game was on the Nez. But if you play as a counsellor and you're running about and you hear Jason's theme, it's 8-bit. So it's really classic nostalgia for this game. So there's two single-player modes for this game. There's offline bots, which you choose the difficulty and the number of bots and the map and what Jason you want to go. And as I said, it's the easiest way to get points on this game. There's also the virtual cabin, which I believe is at its end now, uh, with version 2.0. It gives you uh, tons of tasks to do around the house and challenges to unlock little Easter eggs, being able to see stuff for future content release. Now, in the basement of the house is every character model of Jason from one... Um, mutant baby Jason right through up to including yeah you saw him there Super Jason from Jason X and not only that there's like I said there's lots of little easter eggs a, news, a bloody newspaper a radio that gives you a little kind of audio tidbits on the making of the game and other parts each Jason character model is detailed with their own weapon and stats. It's beautiful. And there's the Jason from Hell, the Tom Savini special Kickstarter pre-order one. And then this Jason, Jason X, is for a future release. One of my favourite, favourite moments was discovering the Misfits, uh, Friday the 13th, in the game. And, you know, you can have a little dance to the song, whatever. But then again, it can also lead you to death. So 
I alluded to it earlier about the content roadmap for Friday the 13th. Uh, basically, this is something that developers wanted to do. They wanted to give extra content to fans that have helped it in its initial phase of Kickstarter and beyond. So they did uh, eventually get console versions. That was a biggie for them. And then coming from there, there's new Jasons, there's been new kills, there's new clothing items, new counsellors, free emote packs, Jarvis House map, uh, Retro Jason, which was the NES one, Virtual Cabin 2.0, uh, offline bots, which was a big, big thing, so that you could play offline if you had any problems or anything with your connection. So from there you had single player challenges demo, which is a major for a game like this to actually get a single player uh, option to begin with. Then new, more counselors, new map, new Jason. The new Jason uh, on the bottom left of the map was part five, which was Roy. I don't really think you can call him Jason. So what we've got to come in the spring and summer is new clothing for counselors. We've got a new game mode. They have alluded to this via uh, YouTube videos. Uh, I believe it's called Paranoid, which may be one of the counselors has to go around and kill other counselors. Who knows? Maybe that's a thing. We'll see, because the, at one point there was uh, there was team killing online, and maybe this is a thing to appease those people. So after the new game mode, there will be a single player challenge. Then we have the new Jason and a new map pack. Uh, a new map, sorry. And these have been basically revealed through the Virtual Cabin 2.0 as Uber Jason from Jason X and the Grendel. Now these are big, big issues and I'm sure that they will be here very, very shortly and I cannot wait to play as Uber Jason or to be chased by Uber Jason. in closing for this game I feel it's one of the best uh, multiplayer online games say in the style of Depth uh, Dead by Daylight those kind of games like People vs Monster kind of games uh, it's got lots of replay value with new content constantly being added there is some paid for DLC, but, you know, it, they add extra value to the game. Uh, I don't see many bad points, especially with uh, the AI of the bots uh, in line to be repaired and fixed. That's my only main issue with the game, uh, apart from counselors being able to swarm Jason and over just control over them. Other than that, the game's a solid mm, 8 out of 10 for me, and I will still be playing it maybe this time next year or until the next Friday 13th. On that note, people, thank you very much for watching and listening. Please rate, review, subscribe, and please come back for more videos very soon.